Now um, we are ready to go ahead and get started. This evening, our speaker is actually Jeff Witherspoon with Consumer Credit Counseling. And what Jeff is going to do is he is going to share his PowerPoint screen with us and go ahead and start. All right, this class is called What's the Compromise? I developed it a few years ago. Um, just real quickly, like I said, we're a United Way agency. So if you've given to the United Way, thank you. This is one of the programs that they support. Um, also, your state of Kansas, the bank commissioner's office gives us a grant um, so I can teach this class. Um, I, again, my name is Jeff Witherspoon. I'm the director. I've been here for 24 years and uh, we're very informal here. We're just here to help answer questions, counsel you on your situation, give you advice and options. Uh, we've been around for 35 years. A lot of people don't even know we exist. I have two offices, one here in Wichita, one up in the Salina, office, in the Salina area. Um, like I said, we're here in Wichita at 727 North Waco in Suite 175. Everything we do here is free of charge. Um, like I said, we don't sell um, products or services. Um, we can also pull credit reports for you. And while I'm thinking about it, just a little tip, um, because of COVID, um, normal protocol to pull your credit report through a website called annualcreditreport.com. Um, you have to uh, go to their website and then you can look at your information as long as you can fill out um, the information correctly and answer the questions. Uh, normally you can only look at it once a year, but because of COVID, they're letting you actually look at your credit report for free all the way through April 21st, once a week. So if you haven't done that, you might want to consider doing that. Uh, we teach a lot of financial seminars throughout the state of Kansas. Uh, last year, I had over 300 uh, classes that I taught personally. Um, we do have what's called a debt management plan, where a lot of times we can help people avoid bankruptcy by getting payments lowered, interest, late, interest rates lowered with their creditors. We're kind of the go-between. Uh, we partner with many, many nonprofits here in town, including the library, obviously. We are the last HUD-approved agency in the city. So if you have a problem with a mortgage or if you need help with rent um, for free, we will try to work that situation out for you. We'll make those phone calls, help you fill out the paperwork. Um, so we're here to help you with a mortgage or, or a rent assistance situation. One thing I'm extremely proud of in all the years that I've been at Consumer Credit, uh, we do have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Um, knock wood, I've never had one complaint go to the state of Kansas um, or to the Better Business Bureau. So we try to do what we can to help people um, regarding their finances. Uh, we're not attorneys, so we can't give legal advice. Um, and we're not financial planners per se, although uh, a lot of us do have a lot of knowledge in that, in that regard, but we don't sell investment strategies or things like that. So this is what I call food for thought. I always like to start my presentations um, with some statistics. Currently in Kansas, the average household has about $7,000 in credit card debt. Um, the good news is that number is actually going down. The bad news is the interest rates on credit cards are starting to go up. And it took me a while to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, but a lot of creditors think that there's going to be a recession next year. Um, and bankruptcies will be going up. So they're raising interest rates. So they're trying to collect their, their, their money back right now. I don't know if any of you have noticed that your interest rates have gone up on your credit cards. Um, getting a lot of phone calls here. People are upset because their credit cards are being, their um, limits are being lowered. Um, that's what's going on is because a lot of creditors, like I said, think, think that next year might, we might have a recession. 58% of Americans have less than $1,000 in their emergency fund. And I always say it doesn't take much anymore to have $1,000 in an emergency. Car breaks down, medical costs, um, you have a job loss. You know, we have 8% 8, 8 unemployment right now here in the Wichita area. Um, so a lot of people don't have money in an emergency funds. Um, and that's why they have to scramble and they have to borrow money at high interest if they need that money for an emergency. Currently, the average Social Security check for a retiree is $1,450. And that's actually a Kansas number. I looked it up. So the average retiree in Kansas on Social Security is receiving about $1,450. I always ask the question, can you live on $1,450? Answer is probably no. Currently, student loan debt in the United States is up to $1.6 trillion. 
before COVID hit, 11% of student loan debt was actually in a delinquent situation, which means no payments have been made for 90 days. I don't know if everybody heard the news, but when COVID hit, federal government said that all student loan payments um, were didn't have to be made and everything was put on hold until the end of the year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see after the end of the year with everything going on politically, um, what will happen with student loan debt if they'll lower the interest rates. There's been talk of excusing up to $50,000 of it um, if Biden wins. So there's a lot of talk around that student loan debt because it is very crippling to the people that have it. In 2019, we had 770,000 bankruptcies. Um, that was actually the lowest number we've had in years. Um, like I said, some of the, the meetings I've been in on and what I'm hearing, um, they're thinking that in 2021, bankruptcies may go um, to one and a half million um, because of the COVID situation. Currently, the average amount in a retirement plan is about $112,000. Um, that's just way less than most of us will need. 64% uh, of American households will probably not have enough money to retire on. The definition of not enough money to retire on would be to have the same lifestyle that in your retirement that you have today. Um, that number really frightens me um, because I just don't want to see people struggle. Um, and as you know, Social Security is under a lot of pressure. It doesn't have enough money as it is. So how is that going to be made up? The average household owes about $231,000 in mortgage debt in this country. Good news is you live in Kansas. The average is only $137,000. Um, so we, cost of living here in Kansas is a lot lower than it is in other parts of the country. Um, the average cost of a brand new car now is $37,000. Um, when I was taking finance classes at Wichita State, and I'm embarrassed to say that was 40 years ago, I had an instructor who said that if you can't pay your car off in three years or less, you can't afford it. Um, back then, I looked it up, the average car only cost about $4,000 brand new, but today the average is up to $37,000. Main reason that is, is because of all the bells and whistles they put on cars. If you think about it, in the old days, you know, you rolled your own window down, um, you had to shift gears to, to, to drive it, you had a clutch. Um, you didn't have a backup camera, you just turned over your shoulder and looked out the back window and you had a little key to turn into the ignition. Um, now today the car, cars are, have all this technology and that's really driving up, up the cost of them. Um, I don't know if anybody paid attention, but when COVID first hit, the car companies really kind of panicked because um, they were afraid they wouldn't be able to sell their cars. So they put out 84 month interest free on a lot of cars. Um, instead of what I would have thought would have happened that people still wouldn't have, have done that. They, they were selling cars left and right and they sold almost all their cars immediately because of the financing. Currently, the average household of four spends almost $3,000 a year on cell phones and internet. One reason I put that statistic in there is because when I started this job 25 years ago, nobody had those things. Cell phones were not prevalent, pretty much only the rich people had them. Um, and internet really wasn't a thing. If you remember, for those of us that are old enough, it was dial up, it took a long time to connect and it wasn't really a pleasant thing. Um, today, 97% of the population actually has a cell phone um, where nobody had, hardly had one 25 years ago. I love this statistic, 57% of people admit they wouldn't marry somebody that had $50,000 of debt. And I think that's one reason millennials are not getting married is because if you have two millennials that have average student loan debt, which right now is about $30,000 per kid that went to school, so two of them would have $60,000. So they're already behind the eight ball financially. Currently, the total debt obligation for all of us together for houses, cars, credit cards, medical debt, you name it, is about $19 trillion. And the United States government owes almost $27 trillion of debt. Um, I don't know if you've been paying attention to Congress, but they've been fighting over adding to that. The Republicans want to add another trillion. Um, Democrats want to add another $3 trillion. I don't know at this point if there will be a compromise or not, but it will add to that $27 trillion number. 
song I sing a song. I got bills, they're multiplying. You know, we're all struggling financially. Um, part of what's going on is cost of living is going up faster uh, than our incomes. And I always try to tell my clients, only try to focus on what you can control. Um, so that's kind of what this class is about that we're talking about tonight is how to save money um, in day-to-day -day expenses. If you ever wanna scare yourself, um, there's a website, it's usdebtclock.org. Tells you how much money is owed. That's where I got some of those statistics that I just read off to you. And it breaks down to every taxpayer um, it's up to $213,000, and that's just taxpayers. If you broke it down to everybody in the country, it's $80,000 per person. That's why when you hear them talk about um, who's going to pay the debt back, it's our kids and grandkids. Um, this is why, because um, there's a lot of money owed right now. So even George is worried. So what do we do? How do we focus? How do we make things work? Well, that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to try to give you some really specific ideas on what you can do personally. Everything that we're going to talk about tonight, I do myself. I know it works and I know it works well. One thing that I try to do, since I'm in the nonprofit world, you don't make a ton of money. So I've always tried to find the least expensive way to do something. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about needs and wants. Um, to me, this is one of the biggest problems that we have in this country is we've convoluted our needs and our wants. There's very few things in life that you need. You need food, water, shelter, medicine, um, transportation. The problem is the wants get in the way of common sense and, and you buy things that you can't afford. To me, the perfect example of that is the Super Bowl. And most of us have seen the Super Bowl um, we watch it for a variety of reasons. We watch it for the game. We watch it for um, the camaraderie because a lot of people go to parties. But the other thing is we watch it for the commercials. And one of the things I like to ask people is think about the last Super Bowl that you watched. And I got to watch the Chiefs um, win for the first time in 50 years, I think it was. So I can take that off my bucket list. But anyway, I want you to think about the commercials. Is there just one just one commercial that you saw that advertised something that you needed in life to survive. Do you need GoDaddy? Do you need a Snickers bar? Do you need Doritos? Do you need a Cadillac? The answer is no. Although somebody, when I'm teaching this live, will always say, I need a beer, okay? So sometimes you do need a beer to, to relax. But anyway, there's nothing advertised during the Super Bowl. So I always ask the question, this last Super Bowl, a commercial, a 30 second ad was $2 million for only 30 seconds of airtime. So you have to ask yourself, why would a company spend $2 million for only 30 seconds of ad time? And the answer is it must work and it must convince people to buy their products or companies wouldn't spend that kind of money. So the point is, you've always got to satisfy your needs first. Then you try to go after your wants and make sure you don't use emotion in your buying decision. And that's what most people do is they get stuck in, they want something when they don't really need it. And then once you buy it, you have buyer's remorse and you're stuck with it. So there's two words in the English language that we all hate. Here's the first one. It's called budget. Everybody hates that word. So I try not to use that word when I'm counseling somebody. I change it to spending plan. What is your spending plan? How much money comes in? How much money goes out? Are you covering your needs first and then your wants? Or are you doing it backwards? Um, and we hate that word for a variety of reasons. It's very restrictive. We have to learn to tell ourselves no. Here's another word that everybody hates. Diet. Those two words are very restrictive and we all hate it. We all hate to work at it. And I always tell my clients, nobody cares more about your situation than you do. So you're the one that's gonna to have to force yourself to deal with your own situation. You know, for years I've had people come in and they say, you've got to fix this. And I always tell them, no, I'm gonna give you the information to fix it yourself, but it's gonna be up to you because 
you are the one that cares the most about your situation. I've always felt like I've had a, a strange job. It's almost like financial social work. I'm trying to convince people to do what they need to do themselves to fix their own situation, um, but they've got to want to do it. So we're going to take those words away and we're going to save some money. Easily the number one category where I see people wasting the most money is easily transportation. We just absolutely positively love our vehicles way too much in this country. Matter of fact, I had a conversation with a client this morning that bought a $44,000 car um, just three months ago. And after running her finances, I told her that I didn't really feel like she could afford the car, but she was pretty much stuck with it because she was upside down. So let me give you some really specific tips on how to save money on transportation costs. All right, what I need you to do, and a lot of you have not done this for quite a while, is I want you to shop your car insurance premium around and do it with at least five companies. A lot of times you will get a cheaper rate if you do that. Another thing that the companies like to have you do is take what's called a defensive driving class. Um, you can take it online. A matter of fact, I got a reminder email just yesterday that I need to do that again. They cost about 20 bucks. Um, they're boring as heck, but you can save up to 10% on your car insurance premium if you will take that. Another tip, and I do this personally, is I pay my car insurance premium six months in advance. I get a 10% discount by doing that. I'm not getting 10% on my investments right now. Matter of fact, if you're in the stock market, it's gone down quite a bit here in the last week. So it's free money. Um, you don't have to pay taxes on it, so take advantage of it by paying your premium in advance. Always pick the highest deductible you feel you can afford. If you're financing your car, the most the lender will let you pick as your deductible is $1,000. Now, understand there's two different deductibles on a car. You have comprehensive, which covers um, hitting a deer, hill, tree falling on your car, then you have collision, that's if you get into a wreck. Um, my rule of thumb is if your car is only worth about $4,000 and it's paid for, you might wanna consider dropping comprehensive and collision. If you have a good driving record, believe it or not, your insurance for liability only will only be about 25 bucks a month. Now understand if you do get in a wreck and it's your fault and you get the ticket, um, it'll cover the other car, but it won't cover the damage to your car. So you better make sure you have the money in the bank. Before you buy your next car, you need to research it like crazy. Make sure the car that you're buying is not a lemon. Some of the sites that I like are Edmunds.com, Consumer Reports, and Consumer Reports has a magazine and those are in the library so you can look at those for free. They always have a, once a year they have a car issue where you can go in and check out cars. Uh, KBB, which stands for Kelly Blue Book, where you can find out the value of the car that you're going to buy and the value of your current car. Um, KBB.com, if you remember, for those of us that are older, they used to be at the banks or the libraries and you go look in a little book, but now you can look it up online yourself. And then once you figure out what car you actually want to buy, go ahead and spend the money and get what's called a Carfax. You've probably seen their commercials where there's a little box. Um, that's how you can look at the individual car. Um, so different vehicles have different rates. So do all the comparison shopping that you possibly can. One of the best things that I like today is the internet will allow you to look at cars all over the place. So it's not like the old days, you just go down to a lot and look at cars. You can actually look on the internet to find the best deals. Um, I'm a big fan of it and I don't have it listed. It's a, a site called Car Gurus where you can look up specific cars um, and you can even have cars delivered to your house. I did that, I actually bought a car from Texas and I negotiated to where they delivered it right to my house. It was kind of funny, I wish I would've had it on video. They had one of those giant trucks come down my street and actually drop the car off right there in my driveway. Um, never buy a brand new car. Cars lose 20% of value in the first year. And a lot of people don't understand why they go down so quickly. So let me explain. The reason cars go down in value so much is because the manufacturer needs to make a profit on the car. And so does the car dealership. 
So that's where that 20% comes in. The other reason I'm not a big fan of buying a new car is because you pay sales tax here in Kansas on cars. And right now it's seven and a half percent in Sedgwick County. So if you buy a $10,000 car, that car actually costs you $10,750. And most people don't have the cash to pay the sales tax. So they have to roll it into the financing. So whatever their interest rate is, they're paying that on top of the taxes. So they may, if their deal was 6% interest, they're paying 6% on their sales tax. If you buy your groceries here in town at Dillon's, consider getting the rewards card to get cheaper gasoline and keep an eye on the expiration. Make sure you don't let your, your points go away so you lose those on your gasoline. A little tip that my family does, we try to fill up late at night at Dillon's and we'll fill up two or three cars all at once. That way we're not keeping people from pulling in and out because there's hardly anybody there that late at night. Slow down. You get better gas mileage if you do. You're less likely to be in an accident. Your car engine will last longer. Your tires will last longer. You know, my, even my own family makes fun of me because I drive the speed limit. The reason I drive the speed limit is not because I'm old and I'm scared, it's because I'm spending money. So I'm always thinking when I drive my car, how can I get the best gas mileage and get the best bang for the buck? Because like I said before, vehicles are extremely expensive. Spend money on proper maintenance, especially oil changes. One of the new things that they've had out the last few years are what's called full synthetic oil changes. They're more expensive, but they're better for your engine and you can go a lot longer between oil changes. So you might want to consider doing that and always use a coupon when you get your oil changed if you can to save yourself some money. Because some of those places will charge, I've seen as much as $100 for an oil change. Please check your tire pressure regularly. Most, most people do not do that. You can buy one of those little um, gauges for like three bucks, keep it in your car, and about once a week go out and check your tire pressure. You get free air at Quick Trip here in town. Um, if you do that, your tires will last a lot longer and you're gonna get better gas mileage too. Next time you buy your tires, I want you to consider buying them off the internet. There's companies like Tire Rack, Tire Buyer, and Discount Tire um, where you can save money. And a lot of times they have sales. Last week, I got an email from Tire Buyer that um, was ha having a $100 discount on Continental tires, which are actually the tires I normally use. I, didn't, I don't need any right now. Um, but I could have saved $100 just by buying them. And what they do is you buy them through the internet, they'll ship them to you, and there's dealers here in town that'll put them on for 20, 25 bucks a tire, and um, you can save yourself quite a bit of money. So always do the research, make sure you're getting the best deal. There's a app called Gas Buddy, where you can find the cheapest um, gasoline in town, um, it's free of charge, doesn't cost you any money, so you might want to consider getting the Gas Buddy app to save yourself gasoline um, money. Rule of thumb for me is always try to drive your car at least 10 years after you buy it. You really need to maintain it. Once it gets to about 200,000 miles, you're probably either going to have to put a new engine in it or trade it in. Um, in the old days, engines went about 100,000 miles. Today, they'll go about 200,000, but you do have to properly maintain them and not abuse them. My rule of thumb is always keep your transportation costs to about 20% or less of your net income, not your gross income. So if your net income is $2,000 a month, that's $400 a month that you should spend for transportation. That's at the, at the high end. And remember that includes the payment, gasoline, maintenance, taxes, and insurance. Like I said before, the number one thing that I see people overspend on in my, in my counseling sessions are vehicles. And lastly, improve your credit. In the state of Kansas, we do allow um, your premium to be set on your credit score. So if you have a low credit score, you're gonna pay more for car insurance premiums in the state of Kansas, because Kansas is one of the states that allows that to happen. Just an FYI, um, the average credit score in Kansas is roughly 697. So if you can get your credit score and Credit Karma, spelled with a K, Karma spelled with a K, is where you can get your free credit score if you wanna sign up for that. 
Um, they only give you um, Equifax and TransUnion scores. They do not give you experience scores. So I've been talking a lot. I need to get grab a drink of water. Are there any questions out there right now, Tracy or Julie? At this moment, Jeff, nobody has put any questions in the chat window. Um, I'm stunning everybody, I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's keep going because I've only got a little over 30 minutes left. Believe it or not, this was my very first car in 1976. I bought a 1973 Gremlin, baby blue, ugliest sin. I can't, it's probably the worst decision I ever made in my life, but I was only 16 and I was thinking I was cool. I paid $800 for that car. Um, and you don't see any of those on the road anymore because they were pieces of junk. All right, remember the first cell phones. Cell phones were big as a brick. Like I said, the only ones that had them were the super rich people. And um, you fast forward today, 97% of us have one. Um, to me, these are one of the best things in invent that have been invented, but also one of the worst things. If you think about it, when they were first invented, they were just telephones. And then they morphed into telephones and you could text. And then they were telephone texting and then cameras. And then they added actual computers and they have gotten so expensive today, it's ridiculous. So let's talk about ways to save money. Some of the things that I have done through the years to save money is I can, I use prepaid plans and there's a ton of plans out there. If you do the research, some of the ones I've run across that I've used in the past, Republic Wireless is a good one. Mint Mobile is a good one. Track Phone, Consumer Cellular, Straight Talk, Boost, or Metro PCS, and that's just a few of them. I just listed some. Um, if you do some research, there's plenty of them out there, but you need to be careful because there are certain parts of Wichita where your phone may not work. So usually on the website, you punch in your zip code and they'll let you know whether or not your phone will work well um, with where you live. When your contract is up, do not hesitate to renegotiate with the companies because they don't want to lose your business. Um, don't be afraid to ask for the best deal possible. Don't buy the newest phones. Um, currently, the most expensive iPhone is about $1,450. Unfortunately, these have become big status symbols for teenagers. So if you're a parent and your kid is wanting one of these phones, you're gonna to have to learn to say no to them. Um, I always ask, would you um, carry around $1,450 in cash? Um, hopefully the answer is no. Matter of fact, there's Samsung makes a phone now, it's fo foldable and it's almost $2,000. Some of the best times to buy cell phones are Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, that's what I try to do is buy phones. Matter of fact, I will show you my phone. I bought this phone last Christmas for $89. It was brand new. The phones that I like a lot, they tend to be really inexpensive for Motorola phones. They're called Motos um, to be cool for the kids. They have pretty much most features that you're gonna need. Um, and I've used them for years. Like I said, mine only cost $89. Um, it was two model years behind the newer ones. That's why it was so inexpensive. Um, I think they're up to Motorola 8s right now, so that's when they had extras that they were trying to get rid of, so that's why I got it for such a good price. Always pick the data plan that is the least amount that you need. One reason, um, your monthly is so expensive. <laughs> Excuse me. Because you're paying for a lot of data. The way my phone works is when I walk into work, it automatically picks up the free Wi-Fi here in the office does the same at home. So it's always on the, it's not on, it's not on the, um, it's not out there using data, so that's why I can save so much money. Right now, my plan is $20 a month, is all that costs me. So I always go with the least amount of data that you need. Um, if you sign up for an auto payment, a lot of times they'll give you a discount, usually 5%. Um, so if you're willing to let them put it on your credit card or take it out of the checking account, you'll get a little discount there as well. Um, cell phones are expensive. I had a client probably six months ago. Um, between the phones that they bought and the plan that they had, they were spending over $400 a month for cell phones. Just an FYI, and I don't have stock at Motorola, but this is the phone that I was talking about. 
um, right now, not on sale. Motorola phone costs about 125 bucks. All right, let's take money at the grocery store. You go to the store to pick up milk, and you spend hundred dollars, and you forget the milk, and the end. Um, my first job um, out of college, I couldn't find a really good job, so I ended up managing a grocery store. And I was really shocked that grocery stores are not your friend. They are literally designed to take every dollar out of your pocket. Um, so here are some of the tips that I like to give um, about food costs. Always use a weekly sales flyer to save money. They come out on Wednesdays. The front page is usually what they call the lost leader page. So a lot of the stuff on the front page is, is at a very good price and the store might even lose money on it. Um, they actually get money from manufacturers to put their items on sale because a lot of the companies want to make sure that their stock is rotated and they get it out of the store. So use the weekly sales player to meal plan. Since beef prices are so ridiculous right now, um, you might want to consider meals without beef. Consider chicken, pork, and turkey. They're a lot less expensive. Even consider having meatless meals to save money because the meat costs a lot of times drive up the cost of, the, of your meal. Uh, my rule of thumb is to spend about $225 a month per person in the household, but that also includes your personal items like bleach detergents, shampoos, cosmetics, um, and toilet toiletries. So if there's two of you in the household, you should be shooting for $450 a month, and that also includes eating out. Always limit junk food, pop cookies, potato chips, um, no nutritional value, high in price, high in cost. Um, Always buy off brands unless you have a coupon to make it cheaper. Another thing that I do in my family is we shop at Aldi's. Um, Aldi's you can save a ton of money, um, but Aldi's definitely has some negatives. You have to sack your own groceries. They have very limited supplies of, of certain things. If you want a can of green beans, there's one can that you can choose from. Um, they're open very limited hours. Um, it's kind of a no-fills grocery store. You even have to rent the cart. It always amazes me that at an Aldi's, you'll never see a straight cart um, because people will walk all the way back up to the store to get their quarter back. But if you go to Dillon's, you'll see shopping carts all over the parking lot. Um, human nature is just amazing to me how lazy we can be. Always make a list and stick to it. Don't take your kids to the store and your kids could be 50 years of age. Um, because kids tend to throw stuff into the cart that you don't need. It's not on your list. So take a list and try to stick to it. And then, like I said, always use the weekly flyer. Only buy produce when it's in season. When it's out of season, it's ridiculously expensive. Always use a coupon when you go out to eat and split meals. One of the only good things to me about COVID is we're not eating out as much. Um, we are doing some takeout. Um, Try to make large meals for dinner and then take leftovers for lunch. If you do eat out, don't buy the pop or the tea. Drink water, it's free and it's healthier. Um, my second job after the grocery business, I was district manager for Godfather's Pizza and we literally made more money on the pop um, than we did on the pizza um, because today it's ridiculous. It's over $2 for a thing of pop and it might cost the restaurant 15 20 cents for that for that pop that's how they can afford to fill it up for you free uh, because it doesn't cost them much money if you are a shopper at dylan's i highly suggest you look at a website called krogercrazy.com and as you can see crazy is spelled with a k there's a woman who literally goes through every ad each week and she tells you the best deals at, at, at Dillon's. Dillon's is owned by the Kroger company. So you might want to check out that website and they'll, she'll tell you where to get the coupons to save the most money. I'm running out of time. I've only got, well, I got about 10 minutes. So I'm going to skip clothing, um, but uh, I'll be happy to send you this PowerPoint if you'd like. So I want to talk to you about a concept that my dad taught me many, many years ago, and I've done this my entire adult life. 
one of the problems that I see with clients is they don't have an emergency fund. And they also, when um, expenses that they know that they're going to have pop up and they don't have the cash for it, um, they start to scramble. One of the things that I would love for you to do is to try um, to set money aside on a monthly basis for the following things. This is gonna be one of your homework assignments and I'll never know if you did it. I want you to sit down and figure out over the next 12 months, how much you're gonna spend for car tags and taxes, back to school expenses if you have them, any kind of insurance that you have if you don't pay it monthly, how much you plan on spending for holidays, birthdays, vacations, any expenses associated with your pets, and schedule car maintenance. This is what I call the big scary number. If you put a dollar amount for the next 12 months for those things, it's probably gonna be in the thousands of dollars for you. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to figure out how much money all of that amounts to, add it all together, and then I want you to divide it by 12. What I want you to try to do is open up a savings account and put that dollar amount in it every single month. So let's say your number is 1200 a year. When you divide that by 12, that'd be $100. So I want you to put $100 in it this month, $100 in it next month, $100 in it next month. You get the letter from your county saying your tags and taxes are due on your car. You pull the money out and you pay it with cash. So you constantly are replenishing that account. And these are expenses that you know you're gonna have. These are not emergencies. These are expenses that just don't happen on a monthly basis. Like I said, my dad taught me that con this concept many years ago, and I've done this for 42 years of my life. And so when those things come due, I just pull money out of the savings account and pay for them with cash. So I don't have to put them on a credit card. And here's a little illustration. Like I said, um, write all of them down, get a yearly total, divide it by 12, and then you'll have a dollar amount and stick it in your savings account. I call it hidden cost of life for your periodic expenses. Do I have some questions? Okay, um, Jeff, there are a couple of questions. Um, one of the questions was, what is a good month to buy a car? Like, is there a particular month? They say when the model year, years roll over, so when the 2020s, the 2021s are on the lot, which is actually now, but we're in, during the pandemic, we're kind of in a weird situation. Like I said earlier, they put the cars on sale when COVID first hit back in March and April, and they cut those really, really good deals because they were afraid they were going to be stuck with inventory. So there actually are not a ton of cars out there brand new uh, because they also shut down the plants because of COVID. So I would say when things get back to normal, at the end of the model years, which is usually July and August, um, if you're buying a new car, but like I said, I do not recommend buying brand new cars anyway. I recommend use that are a couple of years old that have say less than 20,000 miles because a lot of that depreciation will be gone. Okay, and I'm gonna ask a related question to that, but then go back to a question that was asked previously. It okay. says, who do you recommend for financing auto and, co and home, and what about refinancing? Good question. I, I'm not loyal to anybody. I find whoever has the best deal. So I always shop it around to figure out who wants my business. And remember, the interest rate is not the only thing you need to look at because you have the other costs that they like to add on. So always compare apples and apples. Make sure um, you're looking at the total deal because they may give you a really good interest rate, but they're gonna charge you large costs up front. Okay, so another question that was asked is, um, what cell company, what cell phone company do you use? I'm currently using Republic Wireless myself. I tried Mint Mobile, which is real cheap, but I was having a lot of problems in the area of town that I lived in, so I switched to Republic Wireless. Um, if Mint Mobile works for you, you might want to consider it. They actually, if you'll prepay a year in advance, they give you a huge discount. Okay. And then one of the um, chat participants asked if you could show the closed slide so that they could take a picture of it. So I don't know if at the very end you could go back to that and do that. Oh, yeah, I'll be happy to. Well, I just didn't want to run over time because I'm supposed to be done here in seven minutes. So. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna have you go ahead and go on. Um, okay. All right. Okay, like I said, um, almost to a client, and I've literally had over 25,000 clients in my career. Almost nobody has any money in savings. So here's my suggestion. I call it the 30 day no spend challenge. For the next 30 days, only spend money on things that are necessary. So don't eat out, still need to eat. So you're buying groceries and eating. Only pay with cash or a debit card, put nothing on a credit card. Eat up everything in your house. And I know sometimes that's hard. At the last, you may be down to tuna fish and broccoli for dinner, but excuse me, try to eat up everything in your household. Tell everybody in the family why you're doing this. The goal is to try to get money into savings. Try not to buy any new clothing. Don't stop and buy pop or coffee on the way to work. Don't eat out of a vending machine. Don't go out for entertainment. And to be honest, the COVID has actually really curtailed that. Most of us are not going out um, and doing anything because there's nothing we can do. Um, then I want you to try to write down all the money that you think you've saved during that 30 day period. If you don't think you can do it for a full 30 days, try it for two weeks. And then I want you to open up a savings account and stick that money in there. And I want you to try to do that for as many months as you possibly can. So much you're gonna cheat a little bit, that's okay. And I want you to try to build your savings account. And I want you to try to build that savings account up to $3,000. I usually get a lot of pushback and people ask me, why did I pick $3,000? $3,000 will cover most emergencies. Needing a major car repair, uh, medical situation. That's another thing that I see a lot that I didn't used to see. A lot of people have huge medical bills. Even with insurance, you still get large bills. Matter of fact, one of my best friends from childhood actually got COVID and was in the hospital for two months, or not two months, for two weeks. Um, his bill was over $350,000. So try to open up a savings account and get that money in there and force yourself not to touch it until your emergency happens. I'm not trying to jinx anybody, but it happens to me, so I know it happens to you. So try to have money so you don't have to put it on a high interest rate credit card. Here are my top 10 suggestions. Make personal finance a priority. A lot of people just kind of cruise through life. They pay their bills. The one day they wake up and they're almost at retirement age. You've got to make it a priority. You got to figure out how much money you're going to need for retirement. You're going to figure out how much you can really afford when you're spending your money. Like I said before, I have a very strange job. I feel like a financial social worker. I got to figure out what motivates people to be financially successful. Um, somebody asked me many years ago, how do I say, stay so motivated financially? Well, it's pretty easy for me. Number one, all I do all day is try to fix problems that other people have, have in their lives. And I, I see the strain, the stress. Um, people are scared. They're embarrassed. Marriages are on the rocks. Um, so that's what motivates me. But what also motivates me is I have a wife and three kids that I got to take care of. So I always think about my family when I'm trying to motivate myself to not spend money when I want to spend money. Set yourself some financial goals. Write them down. Make sure your spouse and children know what your financial goals are. Um, they say if you write them down and you review them periodically, you're more apt to achieve them. Try to get $3,000 in an emergency fund, like I said before, because there will be an emergency. I'm not trying to jinx anybody. Um, it's usually, like I said, medical job loss or divorce. Unfortunately, I've seen all three with, with clients. This next one may sound strange, but please be healthy. The fastest growing costs that all of us are facing are our healthcare costs. Um, lose the extra five pounds. Try to walk 10,000 steps a day. Um, don't stop drinking pop. Things like that. They're easy to do. Um, and if you do that in the in the long run, hopefully you'll be okay. I'm about to lose battery. Fund your retirement plan to the max. Let me go grab a cord real quick, I'm sorry. Fund 
retirement plan. Put the most you think you can afford in it every, put the most you can afford every year. Don't procrastinate. Always comparison shop. Every time you spend some money, find the best deal that you can. Figure out your hidden cost of life like we just talked about. Stick that money in a savings account every month. Get out of debt. Stay out of debt. I've been debt free now for 14 years. It's a wonderful feeling. Always borrow the smallest amount of money. Get the best interest rate you can um, and shop it around. Lastly, enjoy your life, but make sure you can afford it along the way. It goes by really, really fast. Can't believe I'll be 60 in a few months. Here's my favorite slide. I retire on Friday. I haven't saved any money. Here's your chance to become a legend. You need to become your own legend. In a hundred years, it doesn't matter what house I lived in, what car I drove, or how much money was in my bank account, because I won't be here. What matters to me personally is if I was a good father, husband, son, brother, friend, and financial counselor. Questions? I don't see any other questions. I do see some tips that people have offered in the chat. Um, yep. One person indicated like shopping the perimeter of the grocery store because they put the pricing non essentials in the middle. Um, another one indicated ordering groceries online saves a lot of money because it keeps you from impulse buying. Um, one that I really like is as a librarian, um, there's a lot available at your local library. Books, magazines, DVDs, computers, it's there for you and all free. And let's see. That's kind of what I'm seeing with the tips. You know, one of the things I love about teaching these classes, I learn from other people. They, she was talking about the perimeter of the, of the store. In the grocery business, they always put the milk, bread, and the meat at the back of the store. That's on purpose because it forces people to walk to the back to get those things, which we typically are going in to pick up so they can expose you to other buying opportunities. That's by design. And then another um, person put that they were told that the price of cars increases around tax return time. I've never heard that, but it wouldn't surprise me. In the old days, gasoline in Wichita would go up right before Boeing payday. And then this is an incredibly important one. <laughs> Always grocery shop after eating so that you're not hungry and then you're less susceptible to the impulse spending. I would agree with that. The other thing grocery stores like to do is they like to have the smells of the bakery because it makes you hungry while you're shopping. And they've done studies that you will buy more when you're hungry. That, that person's exactly right. And I always put candy bars and pop at the checkout stand to give you an impulse to buy those things. The first thing that I would like to do is thank Jeff Witherspoon from Consumer Credit Counseling for um, providing us with such an informative program. We really appreciate that and also to all of you for participating.